So normally when I commentate my videos, I like to have a script in front of me. I like to be able to do it part by part, script by script, and section by section. That way it's as good of a commentary and I can have as good of audio as possible for you guys. In a situation like this, however, I feel it's best to leave it as raw emotion because this one is coming from the heart. And this is something I've wanted to discuss with you for a very long time. I will state a little disclaimer that there will be talks of some stuff that people might have experienced in the past or are experiencing in the present tense. So I will say there is a little bit of a trigger warning just in case, but this is something that I've wanted to discuss for quite a while now. And it all stems from one simple question. It's nothing bad or anything like that, but it usually happens in the video comment section or our live chat during our live streams. And it's usually something along the lines of, Hey Eric, or Hey Bioshock Hub, how many times have you beaten Bioshock, Bioshock 2, or Infinite? Or how can you keep playing Bioshock, Bioshock 2, or Infinite? And as you can tell by the title, when I was younger, Bioshock was the only escape that I had. Again, I discovered Bioshock when I was 13, all the way back in 2007. Obviously, it came out, and I was a PlayStation kid. I'm still a PlayStation guy to this day. I still have an Xbox, though, but still a PlayStation guy through and through. And at the time, my buddy, who's my best friend in real life, his name is Logan. So if you're watching it, Logan, shout out to you. I love you, brother. He had an Xbox 360, and I was able to first dive into Bioshock, no pun intended, right after it came out on Xbox 360, and I was hooked. Unfortunately, I couldn't play it for a while, so it kind of fell by the wayside. Lo and behold, going into my freshman year in 2008, I was able to finally pick it up for myself and have it in my possession, thankfully. So I started playing and playing and playing. And it was my only escape from everything that was happening in my personal life. So here's the backstory that is extremely hard for me to tell. And this is where... I want to give you guys that warning that I mentioned earlier. My mom ended up marrying my stepfather when I was six years old. Before that, we were living in Chicago. I was living with my grandparents, and I remember just being a happy-go-lucky kid. Nothing bothered me. I was always laughing. I was always smiling, and I just remember being happy as you know, far back as I can personally remember. Then all of a sudden, one day, everything just kind of got flipped upside down and my world was ripped away. And that's when I found out that my mom was marrying this person. And also, we were ending up moving from Chicago to Calumet City, Illinois. And this is important for later in this story. So, very first night, we're in his house. I remember this very vividly. I'm walking upstairs because that's where my room was at the time, and he had this old waterbed. And I remember a very odd smell, and I just remember making a comment, Hey, it smells funny up here. And I got screamed at the very first night we were in there by him. So that should have been... A strong indicator of things to come and boy I wish I would have known back then how severe it would have gotten so from the age of six all the way until finally when I was kicked out for the third and final time at 18 there was a lot of physical interaction 
between him and I. A lot of punches were being practiced, and I was the punching bag, if you're picking up what I'm putting down. And this was something that happened, like I said, from 6 until 18. And a lot of the stuff that actually happened, I can't go into detail here because of how graphic it actually was and is for that matter. And no amount of therapy will ever get those images out of my head and those videos, I call them videos, but those nightmares, they'll never go away. I'll never get that childhood back. I'll never have a semblance of a normal life because of everything that's going wrong or has gone wrong with my head. So let's go back now to when I discovered Bioshock. While all of this was going on, going into 2007 and obviously then going into 2008, I absolutely fell in love with the world of Bioshock and more specifically Rapture. I fell in love with the characters, I fell in love with the city, I fell in love with the writing, the aesthetic of it, the gameplay, everything about that game took me away from the shitty reality that I was living with in a day-to-day -day basis. And unfortunately, it shouldn't have been like that, but I'm glad that I was able to escape that at least for a couple of hours when I played. Then eventually it merged into Bioshock 2 when that came out. Did the same thing, fell in love with that game. And then finally, Bioshock Infinite came out. And I was actually able to play it here at my grandparents' house. So I was able to not have to worry about anything anymore. And the reason why I can play these games so much and never get tired of them is because I legitimately owe it to these games for the reason why I'm still here. Sure, I've established more reasons as I've gotten older, but Bioshock is the only escape I ever had. It's still the only escape that I can always fall back on and know that I'm going to be happy when I'm playing it. And it's always been my escape. It's technically my only escape. And now we're at a good part in my life where I get to share that escape, not necessarily as an escape in a way that I needed to before. I get to help those who need it more than ever. And by that, I mean, if I were talking to my younger self, as me right now, the 29-year-old Eric, I would want to tell myself everything's going to be okay. I'm going to go out and make sure that the situation you and I were in, I can help people that are in that situation. I can allow those people to know they're not alone. There's ways to get out of it. There's ways to get help. And hell, even if a simple video can inspire someone to get the courage to actually seek out help for themselves or to tell somebody what's going on in their life. Or if I can take someone away from their depression, their anxiety, or any sort of mental health issue or just issue in general for a little while, I want to do that. And I want to continue to do that. So from the bottom of my heart, Thank you, Bioshock, for giving me this community, you watching this video. Without you, this channel means nothing. My videos mean nothing. Your passion and your dedication for the series and your love for the series gives my value and my content overall value that wouldn't be there normally. So... Thank you. I owe you guys so, so much. And I feel that a simple thank you will never, 
ever be enough. I've left out details beforehand when I was talking about my escape because it happened in the past. It's over with. I've learned from it in terms of stuff that I've done to myself. And from now on, and this is how I've thought since day one with starting this channel, I want to help you, whomever is going through a tough time right now, whether you're going through the physical altercations that I went through, other altercations that I've gone through or that you've gone through as well or are going through, your mental health struggles or your struggles in general, I want to give you guys someone to talk to because I definitely know 13-year-old me would have wanted someone in the situation that I'm currently in now as a friend or at least a lending ear to listen to. So again, I don't think a simple thank you will ever be enough. So I'm going to work my ass off for you guys and try to provide the best content, the best experiences, the best live streams, and overall just the best community here on the channel. So again, final time, thank you so much for everything. Thank you for listening to this video. If you've reached this far, I genuinely appreciate it. And with that being said, I hope you guys have a great Easter if you celebrate it. If not, I hope you have just a great day in general, a great weekend, a great rest of your day, night, week, whatever. Just, I hope everything goes positive for you. And I'm sending out my best wishes to everyone watching this video. With that being said, I'll talk to you all very, very soon. And I hope you find happiness that you deserve. So, thank you. And again, I'll talk to you soon.